A Look at Educational Policy in the United States. It is doubtful that any child may reasonably be expected to succeed in life if he is denied the opportunity of an education. Such an opportunity, where the state has undertaken to provide it, is a right which must be made available to all on equal terms. U.S. Supreme Court, Brown v. Board of Education. On July 2, 1964, the Civil Rights Act was enacted. The law outlawed discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. It ended unequal application of voter registration requirements. The act ended racial segregation in schools and in the workplace. Since Brown v. Board of Education in 1954, there was an even greater need for a law enforcing civil rights in the U.S. President John F. Kennedy called for a bill giving all Americans the right to be served in facilities which are open to the public, hotels, restaurants, theaters, retail stores, and similar establishments, in greater protection for the right to vote on June 11, 1963. The bill was signed into effect by Lyndon B. Johnson. The act forbade the use of federal funds for any discriminatory program. It also authorized that the Department of Education could assist with school desegregation. Even after the act was passed into effect, many schools resisted compliance, and these schools lost funding. In 1964, only 1.2% of African American students in the South attended school with whites. By 1968, 32% did. Implications of the Civil Rights Act today. The Civil Rights Act in 1964 may be the single most important act to have been passed in the last 100 years. It ensures that all Americans, regardless of race, sex, religion, etc., have an equal opportunity in life and in education. Regardless, many would argue that we still have a problem here in the U.S., and I would support that argument. Although it may be able to separate students based on race, isn't it still happening? Aren't white privileged children still accessing a far better education? Indeed, they are. We still have a great deal of work to do in this country as educators to make sure that all of our children are receiving a fair, equal opportunity. ESEA, the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. On April 9, 1965, Congress enacted the Elementary and Secondary Education Act of 1965 under President Lyndon B. Johnson. This has been considered the most expansive education bill ever passed. The bill was part of President Johnson's war on poverty, and as a former teacher, he believed equal access to education was vital to children. The act was established with the idea that children from low-income homes require more educational assistance than children from affluent homes. The act offered new grants to districts serving low-income schools. It created scholarships for low-income college students and offered grants for text and library books. The act created special education centers. The act provided federal grants to state educational agencies to improve quality of education. George W. Bush proposed the Elementary and Secondary Education Act be reauthorized on January 23, 2001. In 2002, the bill was passed with bipartisan support. President George W. Bush gave it a new name, No Child Left Behind. No Child Left Behind required all public schools to administer statewide standardized tests to all students annually. To receive federal funding, Schools must give these tests to all students at select grade levels. Schools that score poorly have to take adequate steps to improve performance. The Act also requires that teachers be highly qualified, and each state is responsible for determining what that entails. NCLB has exposed major achievement gaps in the United States. Many believe that NCLB shifted the focus from learning and opportunity towards testing, labeling, and punishing schools. There has been no significant closure of the achievement gap under NCLB. NCLB created a culture of high-stakes testing that makes it really difficult for educators to instill a true love of learning in students. 
the reauthorization of ESEA. Recently, parents, educators, and elected officials have recognized a need for a new law that will expand opportunity for all students in America and will strengthen our education system. In 2012, the Obama administration began to offer flexibility to states regarding some of the rigorous NCLB requirements. On January 12, 2015, Education Secretary Arne Duncan called on Congress to create a law that will improve the ESEA bill and will improve access to high-quality education. There are many goals of the new ESEA. One is to create a new generation accountability system that advances opportunity and excellence for all students. Another goal is to ensure more time for students to learn and teachers to teach by reducing the amount of mandated standardized testing and supporting classroom level teacher developed assessments. Also, to ensure qualified educators for students and to empower them to, leave, to lead. To ensure English learners have access to high quality education and to ensure more resources are available to schools and teachers. On July 16th, on July 16th, 2015, the Senate passed an overhaul of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act with bipartisan support. The House of Representatives passed its own Republican-backed ESEA rewrite the previous week. Now, the two branches must work together to agree on a proposal that the President will pass. The Senate bill proposed the following key policies. To maintain a federal testing schedule every year in math and reading for grades 3 through 8, and once in high school, and grade span testing in science. To provide flexibility on testing that will allow states and districts to develop more innovative assessments. The bill maintains the state's reports disaggregated data for subgroups of students. States still must identify low-performing schools, but there is no specific rules about what the state must do for intervention. Schools will still receive funding. States will be required to establish challenging academic standards, but will not be required to use common core state standards. Schools do not have to use a teacher evaluation system anymore, but they can if they want to. There are many reactions to the bill, some positive, some negative. Here, there are two reactions that are very positive. Here is an example of a negative reaction to the bill. Many civil rights leaders and advocates do not feel that the bill is strong enough and will not provide any accountability for racial minorities. In conclusion, I believe our education system faces many challenges in the United States. We have overcome some, such as racial segregation, but there is much work to be done. There is an enormous achievement gap in this country. Acts such as the ESEA in 1965 have helped to improve our system and provide equal opportunity, but we still fall short. President Bush's No Child Left Behind plan was a strong plan, yet still fell short. Now, our current administration is striving to way to improve our system and reach the needs of all students, schools, and teachers. I think it is a step in the right direction, but the new bill will have to be implemented well to work. As a teacher, I support much of what the bill is about. I agree that too much testing isn't a good thing. I like testing to an extent because I need to know where my students are at. But do I think that my school should receive less funding as punishment for poor test scores? Absolutely not. Teachers need to be better prepared to handle the situations they face every day. Administration needs to work hard to provide staff with the resources that they need. Students need to continue to work hard and reach for their goals. Policymakers must continue to fight for more funding and better programs for our students. There is a lot to be done. Our past shows us that change is possible, but it takes